podcast. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, worldwide, toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is exxone at exxoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our website, guess what it is? You've got it, exxoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is uh, Sandrea Mosses. She's an international medium, but she's also an author. And as I said, she's an international medium uh, for many years now. She has worked in Canada, Ireland, Wales, Spain, and Gran Canaria. She has performed on churches, halls, centers for many, many years. As a medium, she is renowned for her speed and accuracy, astonishing audiences at every performance. Now, she's the author of Vanquishing Ghosts and Demons, and um, it, it's, it's a great book. It tells about how mediums work and how Sandria, with a team of mediums, has for many years removed unseen and wanted darknesses from people's lives. She's appeared on Howard Hughes' Unexplained TV, BBC West Midlands, uh, Fakin Radio, Gran Canaria, and... Um, also, Spirit and Destiny magazine has written up on her. So joining me now from the beautiful United Kingdom is my guest this hour, Sandria Mosses. And Sandria, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you, um, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here. My goodness. How did you ever get started on your quest to being a medium? <laughs> um, uh, when you look back, you wonder how you ever get on these journeys. And, mm-hmm. and you, it kind of fell together. Opportunities and opportunities um, um, are all fell into um, place. Um, I went to work uh, at somewhere, and I met someone I hadn't seen for about uh, twelve years, and we just ended up doing a journey together, wow. which was learning to do mediumship. How does one learn how to become a medium? <clears throat> um, you can train to be a medium. Well, but there has to be a natural gift there as well. Mm-hmm. You can try and tip people to do basic um, mediumship, which is through which is through um, meditation, training the mind to quieten the mind so the mind can receive, strengthening links with guides. Um, it was only after I started develop did I realise I'd always known these things, and I just assume everybody else did. Wow. What was your first experience as a medium like? Um. <laughs> um, my first experience with me, I'd sat in, I'd done meditations for quite mm-hmm. a while with um, uh, with um, my friend down in Cornwall, and we'd done lots of meditations together, but we'd just gone on and fun journeys. And when I went to the Spruce's church, um, that was shown how to make the link, I didn't realise what I was supposed to be doing, and I, um, I, I had the most amazing link without realising if I had this little girl come in. And I was trying to get her out of my meditation, mm-hmm. which was quite funny, really. And then when they said feedback, I was had to try and like, get her back again. So I was very fortunate to straight away to have a very, very strong link um, with the afterlife. Wow. Do you think that there are more people who have the ability, who just may get a glimpse into what they see or, or something that is communicated from the other side that they just put it to uh, a hunch or, oh, wow, I, I knew that was going to happen. Or, you know, I had a funny feeling that. Oh, oh I, I, absolutely, Rob, without doubt. And um, people are born psychic. <clears throat> people are naturally psychic. We're naturally gifted. But as we, as we develop, as we grow, we lose it. And we logic it. Our worst enemy is our mind because our mind will logic it out and think, oh, well, I, 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 you know, perhaps I thought it. You know, uh, it was just a coincidence. Sure. And that's how I thought it. And so we, we often lose this natural, innate ability to help us 
especially in our hours of need. Isn't that the truth? Um, are, <laughs> are you seeing more children or more young people starting to become mediums than, let's say, 15, 20 years ago? Um, I think children naturally have a gift. I I've see. come across some amazing children um, and through my work, and still now, they, they, they never fail to amaze me in their abilities and what they can mm-hmm. do. And I think we're living in a, a little a more accepting world now, whereas the imaginary friends that they can see and talk to um, is getting more accept, um, and more accepting. And I think as time goes on, we're going to see a lot more children uh, being allowed to be psychic um, and not, you know, forget it, shh, don't mention sure. that. You and I have to take our first commercial break. Please stand by, dear. Exo Nation, my guest this hour is uh, Sandrea Mosses. And uh, Sandrea and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break in about two minutes as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. For more information on Sandrea, her website is www.sandreamosses.co.uk. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. Sandrea Mosses is my guest this hour. www.sandreamosses.co.uk is her website. And uh, Sandrea, tell me about your new book, Vanish, Vanquishing Ghosts and Demons. Um, well, Rob, firstly, I never set out to write a book. Hmm. I just wrote down stories. Of, um, I was actually encouraged by my, by my husband to write down stories of situations I, that I had encountered. And that is what the book is about. It's a series of stories of, and clearances that I'd been on. And um, the weddings are put it together very nicely into different segments. Mm. But um, that's basically what it's about. It's about my work clearing lost souls, souls that have just needed a little bit of help over, right the way through to dealing with demonic forces. Tell me about the demonic forces, because, you know, there are so many people that I've had the opportunity of speaking to over the years who say, ah, come on, there's no such thing as a demon. It's all in the person's mind. And I say, I don't know about that. Tell me about the experiences you've had that I can tell these people. Hey, I had this great lady on the show. Her name is Sandrea Mosses, and she said, bang. Um, Possibly... The, um, the, the there are several demonic forces that I've put uh, um, that I've put in the book, mm-hmm. and um, one of the ones that comes to mind uh, involved uh, a girl of eight, a girl of eighteen, and this girl of eighteen would be pulled from her bed, and, and um, if you can imagine, her bed was uh, she was in a four post uh, bed, mm-hmm. um, facing the door with a window to her extreme right, and she would be whipped out of bed past the bottom of the bed, wow. up past the wardrobes, towards the window in a second. <clears throat> she would be physically thrown out of bed and then could be physically thrown back into bed in exactly the same amount of time, just in seconds. Um, and, and she would just um, and be ripped out of bed and thrown from one side to the other. So, so tell me, how do we explain the, the, the forces behind <laughs> these... Uh, these um, happenings the the girl who was whipped and pulled out of her bed how can we explain an invisible force has the ability to do something physical um rob there's a lot in our world that is unexplained and and, and possibly will be Mm. um and before you know to the end of our lives we won't have answers to everything but it's my understanding what i believe is that you know we have a world around us you know we have the astral plane and we have we have entities that live on there that should not be allowed into this world. They don't know love. They don't know how to exist in here. They have extreme powers. And when they get into our world, they cause absolute chaos. Somehow a rip comes in the, in, in the, in, in the ethereal and allows these entities into our world. And once they're here, they're going nowhere. They're here to stay. So how can we... Well, 
how how can we get rid of them? There must be something we can do that that will push them back to where they where they belong. One of the things that that, that takes place, and a lot of of understanding about dealing with clearances, mm-hmm. it, it is often a psychic battle. It is mind to mind, and if you can have the strength when these entities come at you to to know and push them back and if you can overpower them with your power you can over your personal power you can overpower you can knock them away you can knock them out of your world it's when they end up more powerful than you you can't do that but you need to seek help how different is the real world of demonology compared to that of the hollywood version and i'm thinking about the exorcist <clears throat> you know um um uh, I don't think there's a lot of... Um, I think the exorcist, uh, exorcist was extremism. It, it was really to, you know, with the changing the face mm-hmm. and everything. But, but it does happen. It is very, very rare. But I have come across cases, very, very rarely, but, but where the demonic force has actually physically taken over the person. It's actually somehow managed to overshadow them and take over that body. Hmm. It's nowhere near as bad as Hollywood. And I've certainly never seen people... Uh, to the extent of Hollywood, nowhere near. I mean, that's in that showmanship. But, you know, there are some threads of truth in what Hollywood portrays in films like The Exorcist. If there is a heaven, and if there is a hell, and these demons come from what we have been taught or have been brainwashed into believing as hell, why is it then that people like, like you are called in to ward off the demons instead of the angels from the angelic realm coming down and fighting that battle. And after all, this is what we've been told has happened throughout history, good versus evil. Um, I think a medium is the earth link that allows the other side, the angelic world, to do their job. Mm. And, and uh, a medium will be the link between the two, it will be the link between the two worlds. And sometimes life is very, very complicated and when we start looking at the universal laws, Rob, and one of the universal laws is free will. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, whether people have meant to, whether they haven't, people have invited these entities in. And um, one of the ways is not using an Ouija board properly. You know, being unsh- you know, that can actually invite something in. If you happen to use that Ouija board in a place where the energy can connect mm-hmm. down deep into the bowels of hell, then you're in a bit of difficulty because you've invited that, that person in or that entity in. Have you yourself ever been harmed physically or spiritually by a demonic force? <clears throat> I've been harmed. I have been harmed physically. Uh, it's usually if I'm caught off guard. If I'm caught off guard, um, the, what will often happen is that I will get knocked to the floor hmm. um, and I will get knocked backwards, I will get knocked over, I'll get pushed. But usually it's because of some moments that I've lost um, that, um, and that I've, I've let my guard um, go down. But I certainly feel that I've been um, made physically ill through my encounters. In my early days, in my encounters, in not understanding the importance of cleansing and making sure that when before we leave at the end of the night that there is nothing on our, any of us. To what end does your own religious belief play in the strength that you have when dealing with dem- demonic entities? Um, I'm a spiritualist, Rob, which is quite fortunate, really, because we believe in the existence of mm-hmm. the afterlife, we believe in angels, and so my religion, I'm lucky, um, supports um, the exi- we know that the existence of the afterlife, we, we know we can communicate, we know that guides are there, so I don't have a conflict with my religion and my beliefs and what's been happening to me over the last 15 years. Do you find, or has it been your experience, that those people with less than a... a how can I best phrase this? Without a practicing portion of a religious philosophy are more apt to be affected by demonic powers? Um, I think if you if you have a strong faith mm-hmm. and, and a strong belief and you have that strong connection, I think it's much easier 
to call for assistance, to ask for assistance, to, to ask the other side to help you than, than, than somebody who hasn't got a strong faith, I think. Um, a lot of people, you know, we have a reduction in, in, in faith, don't we, in people, in, in people practicing their religion. Yes. That, that strength helps you. It may mm. not always work, but you've got a better chance if you have that faith. So how does being a medium relate to <clears throat> banishing ghosts and demons? Like, what's the connection here? Yeah. And, you know, Bobby, it took me a while to really understand how, why medium and, and you know, why not someone else. Mm-hmm. As a medium, you can you can tune in. I can tune in and I can talk to you know people's parents, loved ones. But at the same time, I can also tune in and see the dark entities. I always work with protection. I have to lower my protection to be able to see what it is I'm fighting against. So a medium will be able to physically. I can sometimes physically see, but I can certainly mentally see what that person looks like mm. or that entity looks like that I'm dealing with. When you're dealing with communicating with those who have passed and have gone to the other side, what do they tell you? What is the other side like? Is it the the renditions of heaven that that art great artists throughout the centuries have painted? Um, do they socialize with other beings on the other side, or is it basically a very lonely existence? Oh, it's a very very beautiful place. Rob, um, and people will always talk about this other piece, mm-hmm. and they will create the home that they had here. They will often recreate over. They will recreate over there, but in a perfect temperature, in a perfect world. Their loved ones, and they will meet up with their mums and their dads. They'll meet up with who they want to. They're not tied to anybody. They're not tied to have to be with somebody because they were married to them down here, and it just sounds just like, always to me like a perfect world. You know, sitting there in complete serenity, a perfect temperature, and where everything just seems perfection. How does your understanding of the other side, how does it work with the concept that many believe that we are reincarnated, we come back? Do you get this information from the other side? Um, Do we come back, or is it a one-way trip? Um. No, I believe that from the information I've had that, that we do come back, and that we uh, we, we, we we come back, mm-hmm. and we will, I believe that we plan our life before we come down here. Not everything, that's something about it, but there's certain things that we wish to experience, um, whether it's being rich, whether it's being poor, and there's certain things that we will set out to achieve before we come down here, and that we will come down. And sometimes we don't achieve that, and I think we will have a life where we may repeat the same experience several times just to try to get out of our growth and our understanding. We're down here to learn. Planet Earth is, is a learning experience. It's, a, you know, it, it's where we learn, where our soul grows. It grows and it evolves. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour, Sandra. Sandra, please stand by. Exonation, our guest this hour is Sandra Mosses. Her website is sandriamosses.co.uk. And uh, we'll be talking much more to Sandrea about her book, Ghost Hunting, Demonology, Being a Psychic, and Medium. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. And then the show is repeated in its entirety on the Exxon Broadcast Network and on the all-new DMZ Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers around the world. Once again, if you'd like to contact Sandrea, her website is sandreamosses.co. Dot UK, and we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues. We're right here from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Dunk away, we'll be right back. Sandrea so Mosses is my special guest this hour, Exonation. She's the author of Vanish, Vanquishing Ghosts and Demons. Her website is www.sandreamosses.co.uk. 
Can you feel? Can you feel evil? Does evil have a feel? Does it have a smell? Does the room temperature really change when evil is present? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> there are often many physical symptoms that will show you before you tune in. Um, obnoxious, obnoxious smells, mm-hmm. disgusting smells, um, like you can't describe. Freezing cold rooms in the uh, hottest summer's day. It, the, the room is very dark. You can't understand why it looks so dark. The lights don't seem to be able to penetrate. We did one um, clearance, and in the, it was a small bedroom. There were four of us standing in this small bedroom, and the light was on. It was a hundred watt bulb, quite mm-hmm. a decent size um, bulb, and we could barely make out the two other people at the bottom of the room. My friend Lynn and I were standing. We could barely see them. That was so dense was the energy in that property that we could barely see them. What ultimately it, happened there? How did you clear that? Um, the first thing that I always do, Rob, is I never go on my own and I will never tell the other mediums. I will go with other mediums and one of them has to be a healer as well. I will not tell them what we're up against. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to tell me what's there and then I know we've got it. When they explain to me what they can see and that verifies what I know, I then know that we've got it. And I'm guided by my guides. My guides will tell me. My guides will tell me where the doorway should be, what doorway I need to visualise, and what energy we need to push through to push, um, especially when it's a demonic force as opposed to a lost soul who just needs nurturing and guiding. You know, we will use our collective energy, our earth energy, and our psychic power to push them through that doorway. When you look at evil or demonic force, what does it physically look like to you? Is it just a fog? Is it a denseness? Or do you see an actual manifestation of a figure? <clears throat> I have a video on my website of this one property that we ended up going back to um, um, several times mm-hmm. um, with a demon called um, Jezebeth. And a six-year-old child told me the name, uh, the name of this demon. And, and when I looked it up, Jezebeth does exist. She is a demon. She's a demonic force um, and from, from the bowels of hell. And you can see the video in the stairs and watch this black line just appear. And you can feel almost like sick when you see it come down. And she would either form as blackness. Um, her, the army that she brought with her was shadow men that would walk across the walls. Um, but when she did it, she, she appeared as a hag, um, a dreadful hag with grey um, skin, long, black, strappy hair, eyes, piercing, uh, piercing eyes with slits in them, and rotting teeth. Yeah. Sounds like the typical Halloween witch. Uh, um, she was a, a hag. Is the only way you can. Wow. Uh, the only way you can. Dis- the only way you can describe her um, is a hag. I also have another. I also have another photograph. Of a, a little boy listening to listening to mum's tummy, mum's pregnant, and listening to, listening to mm-hmm. his little sister, and suddenly what appears in between him and his mum's uh, in his mum's tummy is, is a claw, oh my. It's a six-fingered claw, and you can see it's as plain as anything. Um, there's no the tips of the fingers are pointed, and I've had to block out his face to protect him, but he's actually looking at it. That child, this little boy, is about five five years old, can actually see it. And he's, the pictures before, he's laughing to his mum's tummy, and then he gets this look, and he's just looking at it. When you're doing a, a clearing, or if Ooh. you're doing an exorcism, if you're, if you're fighting a, up against evil or a demonic force, does would religious artifacts or religious um, uh, statues help? For example, would a crucifix help? Would holy water help? Um, I don't, um... Yeah, I, you're, you're a spiritualist, so you don't... As a matter of fact, I always wear a crucifix. Oh, really? I, yeah, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I believe in the power of the cross. I mean, I believe in God, I believe, oh, in, uh, I believe okay. in Jesus, I believe in Christ, and I believe in the power of the cross. So when I do wear, <clears throat> I do wear those, and I think I wouldn't use them as a tool when I'm trying to work. Mm-hmm. But I think for people who are being attacked, that's something to hold on to. And that's something to push your power through to try to knock it away from you is often very, very useful. 
Tell me about your most riveting case that you've worked on. The one that, to Ooh. this very day, has held no candle to that one case. Um, it has to be. It has to be um, um, Jezebeth, the demon that I mentioned, uh, uh, the demon I mentioned earlier, really? and um, a whole family being attacked. The, the five children have been tormented, and in fact, the family have been tormented for, for several years. They fled one house to get away from it, and she'd found and she'd found them. And um, Jezebeth had the ability to attack all of you at the same time. So she would she would um, separate and divide. And when you're together, when mm -hmm. your minds are joined together and you're working as one, you you have enough power to be able to come across, get, come against um, this uh, this demon. But when she separates you by attacking you all at the same time, you're you're weakened. And <clears throat> and Jezebeth took several attempts and had the children. I don't want children ever in the house when I'm doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. And um, the two little ones had been had, had gone to um, grandma's and. Uh, they hadn't been told that I was coming or what I was doing. And as soon as um, the little girl walked into the door, she was in the house going, Mummy, Mummy, what have you done? What have you done? Jezebeth is so angry. You've tried to get rid of her. You've tried to throw her out. And that child knew what had gone on because that demon had gone to her and told her what he had done. And that demon used to wear two faces to her. <clears throat> she used to come as a little girl with little ringlets in her hair. And that's how she got friends with this little girl. And then she would turn into this, into this um, horrible hag, which the little girl used to say she would take her face off and all bugs would drop out. Oh, gosh. Why do these demonic entities <clears throat> torment, you know, innocent people? Um, they, they don't understand love. They have no concept of love because they come from a world where love doesn't exist. Mm. So it, it, what they do is just a way of life. And what they're doing, they have one purpose. They have one purpose to frighten you, because every time they frighten you, you give off energy. And they're going to draw that energy. That energy makes them powerful. It's their food. And so that's why they're going to torment you. That's why they're going to frighten you, because they want to get more and more powerful. And the longer they're left, um, the, the stronger they can become. Hmm. So what can people do to prevent themselves from being attacked by these demonic or evil entities? <clears throat> I personally believe, Robin, I know a lot of people won't believe in what I'm going to say now, is to keep away from Ouija boards. Ouija boards are dangerous tools. They, um, they allow us to, mm -hmm. to bridge the worlds. And when you bridge the world, you don't know at what point that stone will drop in the pond. You don't know at what point that doorway is going to open and what you're inviting in. And if you're lucky, your loved ones will come through, your mom, your dad, your nan, your granddad. But if you're unlucky, mm -hmm. you're going to open the door. And once it's here, it's not going anywhere. It's not. No, once it's broke that veil, it's going to be here. To, it, 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 it's, going to be, it's going to be here to stay. And with Jezebeth, um, she brought an army through. She had an army. And they were like shadow people. Mm. <clears throat> and you could stand in the room and you could watch them walk across the wall, walk across the wall in the most sinister way <clears throat> with their long uh, uh, elongated legs moving in front of them, their arms moving in, uh, moving in front of them. And they would run across the wall. Uh, run across the wall. <clears throat> and on that particular occasion, um, I actually felt one jump on my back. Oh, and I could feel them. And they're going to go for me because they need to knock me out. They know that I'm the one who's <clears throat> organising it. They know that I'm the one that's controlling it. And I just felt it come on my back and I felt it wrap itself around me. And this is why you need people with a psychic ability because the um, three people, four people that I was with that uh, night, one of them, Lynn, straight away said, it's just got on you, Sandria. Um, <clears throat> of course, which I knew, and that they were able to get it off. Unbelievable. <clears throat> it is. You, 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 when you talk about this, when you talk about these, it seems beyond uh, beyond belief. But when you sit down and you talk to a six-year-old, and a six-year-old six -year says to you, looks you in the face mm -hmm. with such innocence and says, and puts her arms out and says, and points a finger at you and says, never, ever play with an Ouija board. They're doorways to hell. 
but how does a six-year-old even know what the word a Ouija board means? How does a six-year-old even um, um, explain it? That's food for thought. Do you ever call in the the powers of of the angels to come and help you fight these these demonic entities? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, whether it's uh, my own um, guardian angels that I'm working with, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's you know other types of angels, we don't have the power. We're just we're just a source. We're an earthly connection that can bridge the two worlds. And all we do is just provide that earthly connection to be able to get these people, get get rid of these entities. So they do the work, not me. I just do what they tell me to. So you're basically a, a representative of good. <clears throat> um, yes, yes, yes. I'm just a tool. I'm the conduit for uh, for the other side. I, I didn't want to use the word tool because that <laughs> that that would mean that you're being used against your against possibly against your will but you you've been chosen for this for this fight that you've taken on basically you're a you're a crusader you're a knight for the good side oh, that's a very nice way to put it uh, um, 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 Robert I'd like to think I'd like to think I am I'd like to think I am I've done this now for, for 15 years my lord and I've never charged none of the people who come out with me charge and um, you know I've given up hours and hours of my time mm-hmm. Um, to help people who are in distress. What's, um, what, what is the psychological ramification on the people who have had the, their bodies, their souls, their spirits overtaken by demons, and then this lady by the name of Sandria Mosses comes in and frees them? <clears throat> I mean, obviously, you know, you know, it's just, you know, it's total gratitude, but mm-hmm. there's so much fear left. Fear that the entity is going to come back. Yeah. You know, fear that that, that um, and the mind. The mind is an amazing thing because what it will do um, as soon as possible, it will try to help you forget, and the other side will try to help you forget that it becomes a very, very distant memory. In fact, I was talking to a mum only last week of someone that I went out to about two years ago, mm-hmm. and she said he never mentions it now. He never mentions it now. She was talking about her son. She never mentions it now. And that's what you want. You hopefully they're, they're very, very grateful at the time, but hopefully, what's going to happen? You want them to forget. Why don't the guardian angels come and protect those who are innocent, <clears throat> who they know are being, or they know that they are being, are going to be targeted by demonic or negative forces? Um, I, I think they will try and do their utmost. Um, Jezebeth that I spoke about the demon mm-hmm. <clears throat> is that somebody in the family had invited her in. Somebody in the family had invited her in. She'd come through a doorway mm-hmm. um, as a guest and they they can't protect against our free will. The other side cannot take away our, our free will. But um, the little girl in the house, she showed me some drawings and I said, oh, what's that? And she showed me her and her brother asleep. And I said, oh, what's that? And it looked like a full post of bed. She said, oh, it's um, an energy field. She said, my angel tells me to put this around me before I go to sleep so they can keep me safe oh. when I sleep. Why is it Why is it the younger children see the <laughs> angels, see the <laughs> see the, the good in, in, in the spiritual world? And, and why do we forget to see these wonderful things? Um, because... It's back to what I said earlier, Rob, is that we're born psychic. We, mm. we, we naturally have a psychic gift and that we lose that in time. And children can see what is happening. They can see what's going on around, uh, is going around them. Um, I've, I've got some fascinating stories in, in my book about children with, just, with, these amazing, uh, with these amazing gifts. It's because they haven't shut down. They can still bridge the two worlds. They can still, um, and they can still, um, re- they can still remember. Um, and you, you'll be surprised what very young children can tell you. It's uh, and uh, parents are totally aghast that the child knows what's going on. I think many times in this life of ours, my dear friend, that we misjudge not only the children, but we misjudge each other. Um, I think so. 
I mean, I think um, um, uh, I, I think it is so easy. Yeah. To, uh, you know, it is so easy to uh, it's so easy to misjudge, mm-hmm. and it's so easy not to understand um, um, and what is going on um, uh, around us. I think it's so easy, um, Bob, to give your power away to these to darkness yes. and to allow it to, uh, and, and to allow it to take over, and it's so easy to deny it's happening to you. Deny that. I say to people, how have you lived with this? And they'll say, well, I don't know, really. If you, I say to them, how can you live with these obnoxious smells that, yeah. that you want to vomit, that they're so... It, it's like every rotten drain you can think of. Oh and gosh. I say, oh, we've just got used to it now. <laughs> how can you live in this cold? You can yeah. see your breath. It's August. It's a wonderful, warm, sunny day. How can you live in this cold? Sandrea, you and I have to take our final break, dear. Please Ooh. stand by. Great pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for getting up at this very early hour in the United Kingdom to come and join us tonight on the Exxon. It is appreciated. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Sandrea Mosses is my Ooh. guest this hour. uk. And Sandrea and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. My guest this hour is Sandrea Mosses. Her website is www.sandreamosses.co.uk. And Sandrea's got a new book out. It's called Vanquishing Ghosts and Demons. First of all, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Um, well, how do you deal with skepticism? Because I'm sure there are, there are times that you've come across skeptics. And how do you deal with them? Um, do you know, years ago, Rob, I would have argued, I would mm-hmm. have tried to get the point across, um, but I, I don't tend to do that now. As regards to the mediumship, um, mediumship is only going to be something that's going to come into your life when you're in need. And so while life's okay, and it's all hunky-dory and life's great, you're not going to consider anything outside the world that you live in. So you're wasting your time trying to speak to those people. And I know in my heart, I see the fear these people are living in. I see what yeah. they go through and the, the actual torment. So I just tend to I just tend to ignore the skeptics because there's nothing I can do. That's where they're at. I respect where they're at. I respect their views. And um, my views remain unchanged. So you are, beyond a shadow of a doubt, in my book, a light worker. You work with the light. You do positive things. You're out there helping people. My gosh, you told us earlier that you, you don't make any money at this. You do it from the heart. Good for you. <clears throat> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty kind. I'd like to think that I am a light worker. I'd like to think that's um, that the only thing that drives me forward. Sure. And, you know, Paul, Patrick, Dean, Linda, you know, other key members, is to help other people. It's to answer that cry for help. That's the driving force that takes us forward. Um, what's your final message for the Exxon Nation tonight, dear? <clears throat> um, my final message will be to say is that just if you are in trouble and you are in difficulty, seek out a spiritualist church, a spiritual centre, uh, spiritual centre, or your own religion. Go and seek help. Don't communicate with them. When that's what they want you to do is interact with them, ignore them, don't talk to them, stay away from them. And and be true to yourself, because as I understand it, after having the opportunity of speaking to people like you and others over the last 23 years, do not go down a path that will lead you to temptation, that will open up a side of you that is usually guarded. Um, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Don't go, you know, don't, uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> don't go there. Try to stay pure at heart. We're not perfect. No. We're spiritually human experience and we're imperfect, but we're okay people. We're not bad people. We're not naturally bad people. Um, and, but, you know, don't, don't feed your dark side because yeah. whichever side you feed, that's the one that's going to grow. 
Sandra, it's been a great pleasure talking to you tonight. Um, let our listeners know how they can find out about you and where they can get a copy of your book. <clears throat> well, I understand that it's been, it's, it's been launched in America now and in, in Canada. And um, I understand bookstores like Pulse, I believe they're very big big stores. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember seeing them when I came out to, um, I came out to um, Canada. They're available in most big, uh, most big stores, directly from Llewellyn's um, themselves, or Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, I believe another one that was stock, um, are stocking it. Excellent. Take care of yourself, my dear friend, and I look forward to the next time that you and I meet here in the X-Zone. Thank you very much, Rob. It's been a pleasure to talk to such an inspirational person. Thank God you bless very you. much. My pleasure. Exo Nation, once again, my guest this hour has been Sandrea Mo- Mosses. She is a psychic, she is a medium, she is an author, and I'm going to give her one more title A White Knight. www.sandreamosses.co.uk, and the name of her book is Vanquishing Ghosts and Demons. I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.